In this Microsoft Excel tutorial, we will create this data visualization that shows the progress being made in hiring a new development team. Each step in the process is tracked by using a gradient color scale. We will begin with a list of job titles for each team member that we want to hire, then paste in column headers where each column represents a step in the hiring process or whatever process you are tracking and then enter a numeric value to indicate which steps are completed. The project manager job description has been written, so I will enter a number one. The budget has been requested. In that column, I will enter a number two, and then a number three, and so on. And this position has actually been hired, so I will fill in the numbers one through eight. If the project assistant only has the first three steps completed, then I will enter the numbers one through three and those first columns and fill in the rest of the chart accordingly. Select all of the cells that will contain the numeric data. And then on the home ribbon, under styles and conditional formatting, click the down arrow for conditional formatting. Here you can see we have different rules that can be set up and we are going to go to color scales. As you hover the mouse over the different color scales, you can see some built-in options, but I'm going to start a new rule from scratch. So I will click on more rules. And in this dialog box, format all cells based on their values. I'll stay with the two color scale. For the minimum, instead of using the lowest value, I want to specify the number that I'm going to use. So the minimum number is one and then choose a light green. For the maximum, again, instead of the highest value, I don't want to just say the highest value because when I'm first starting out, that might be a three or a four in my chart. So I want this to be the number eight and that the number eight is always using the dark green. And that way the numbers two through seven will be filled in with a gradient in between one and eight. For example, if the process that you are tracking has 12 steps, then you would enter one for the minimum and 12 for the maximum. The color gradient is dependent upon the number in the cell. If I change this from a two to an eight, the color will change to dark green. So it's important that the second column always holds twos and the third column always holds threes and so on. And I actually have a separate worksheet that has instructions on how to enter the data so that when I come back to this a couple weeks later, I will probably forget what to do and I can refer to this. Now, as I update the chart, the colors will fill in automatically. And if, for example, the analyst one job offer fell through, I can press delete on that cell and the color will disappear. We can also hide the numbers so that only the highlighting shows. On the home ribbon, this time go to the number format. Select custom. And then it might say general or some other type of format, but whatever is there, just delete it out and replace it with three semicolons. Click OK. The numbers are hidden, but they are still in the cell. And we can see this by clicking in a cell and looking in the formula bar. And as I type in a new number, it will be hidden and the appropriate color will appear. If we decide we want to change the design, we can go back to the home ribbon and the conditional formatting drop-down menu. This section is for creating new rules and it is where we first set up the color scale. To modify the rule we already set up, we will go to manage rules. Then you can see any rules that you have are set up. We just have our one rule, which I will highlight and click on edit rule. Here, maybe I want to change it to a three color scale. Change some of the colors. If you want to remove the highlighting, you can remove it from just selected cells. Again, from the home ribbon, conditional formatting, clear rules, 
from the selected cells. Or if you're clicked just anywhere in the worksheet, you can go to conditional formatting, clear rules from the entire sheet. Once you have the chart set up the way you want, you can also add some additional formatting just to make it look a little more polished. Increase the row height. Add some horizontal borders. Going down to more borders. Make sure that the line style that you want is selected and add borders to the top, middle, and bottom of each cell. Let's go to view and uncheck grid lines. Highlight the row headers. On the home ribbon, go to alignment and change the horizontal to right the vertical to center, and the indent to 1. The indent value 1 just adds some extra space between the text and the cell next to it. Select the cells across the title area, merge and center, right align, change the background color to the dark green and the text to white. And we could also add a date. It might be useful to know the actual date that each position was filled. We can add this to our chart. Instead of candidate hired, I will change the last column to say the candidate start date. The project manager started on July 1st, but I don't want to enter July 1st in this cell because the cell holds the value 8 in order for our dark green color to appear. So instead, I'm going to go to the insert menu and drop in a text box. and type in our July 1st start date. And while it is selected, I can go to Shape Format and change the Shape Fill to No Fill, the Outline to No Outline, and the Text Fill to White. We have also hired the first developer who will start in a few weeks on August 1st. Let's add a text box to relay that information. But in this case, we will not add the background color yet because this chart is being updated on July 10th. And so once we get to August 1st, we can add the dark green color indicating that the employee has actually started working. Hopefully that all makes sense. We now have an interesting design for tracking progress using a gradient color scale. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoy learning about working with data, please consider subscribing to this channel.